Okay, so now we're going to use a slightly different scenario so that we can control some connectivity by hand. Uh, so from here, this is a sort of a fresh launch of the uh, of the dev kit. I'm going to start up the core GUI, run that in the background, so I get a blank canvas. And this time we're going to go to open, and we're going to go to the NASA Ion course directory in uh, under core dot core slash configs and get this one that is exercise 2a underscore constant and then the the IMN file is the the actual scenario that's down in there um, so what this has got is uh, uh, two nodes uh, that are going to be running ion and a wireless interface between them and again it's using the the simple distance based connectivity model so if we go ahead and start this up uh, then core draws a little green line between these two nodes showing that they are uh, connected uh, and we can grab one of these nodes and drag it away and if you drag it far enough away it becomes disconnected and then we can drag it back in and have it get reconnected. Um, the, the, there's a lot of magic that goes on behind uh, behind the scenes to sort of instantiate ion on all these nodes uh, when you start up the, the, the various scenarios. Uh, I talk about that later. I've got a, a section that sort of steps through all of the uh, sort of where all the scripts are that get invoked when uh, when you start a scenario and 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 cause ion to get instantiated uh, but for now uh, let's just assume that ion gets running on these nodes and there's a couple other things like the uh, uh, the the ion program that responds to pings is actually uh, an application that you have to start so that gets started uh, on all the nodes as well and we're going to be using that in, in just a second um, so what let's do is double click on each one of these to get uh, a couple of terminal windows on the node. So here's a terminal on node N1, and here's one on N2. Uh, and, and here, uh, this is called 2A underscore constant because ION thinks that these nodes are continuously connected. The, the contact graph just says for like 4 million seconds, node 1 can talk to node 2, and node 2 can talk to node 1, uh, and that's all there is to it. Um, so if we go here to the, the tab for node 1, uh, we can type uh, bping ipn colon 1.3 ipn colon 2.1. So we haven't talked a lot, or I haven't talked a lot about the uh, addressing scheme here. Scott talks about it uh, a little bit more in, in some of the lecture notes. But uh, what, this is, uh, what this is showing is uh, this is the, the source uh, EID and the destination EID for this ping command. Uh, the source is going to be uh, node node one and service number three, and the destination is going to be node two and service number one. Uh, again, you know, some of that is is sort of arbitrary. Uh, in the in the scripts that I have that start up the the ion nodes, they will typically start the the echo responder on service number one on all the nodes, so that you've got something running that you can ping to find out if the rest of your configuration is uh, is happy or not. Uh, and then uh, you, you also have to actually tell ION which, uh, which service numbers you might be using as sources. BPing, for instance, doesn't instantiate uh, that service number three as a thing. ION has to, has to already understand that service number three is something that can be used. So there are a couple of uh, service numbers that get started up uh, that are, that are available for use sort of by default in the in most of the scenarios. Um, and again, I'll talk a little bit more about sort of all of the scripts that get that started and, and the machinery there later. But for now, we're just going to do bping and we're going to ping from node 1 to node 3. So this is node 1 uh, hiding over here, uh, and or sorry, node 1 to node 2, and node 2 over here. So we'll do this, hit return, and lo and behold, uh, these bundles uh, bundles go out, bundles come back, and we can ping. Um, not entirely clear what caused the delay there, but uh, we can then take one of these nodes, like node 2, and if we drag it off to the right, eventually Core decides that uh, the distance is too great and they've lost connectivity, uh, and now over here we can see that uh, we're not getting responses. These A's are watch characters that are coming out of the bundle ping application. Uh, watch characters are something else that we'll talk about later in, in doing debugging 
There are a whole bunch of other watch characters uh, that are that are getting piped into a different place uh, that we can uh, that we'll talk about and, and what their meanings are and, and how you can use them to figure out what's going on. But in short, we're seeing nothing go out. Uh, but if we look up here in the little thing that's looking at uh, how many bundles are queued on a particular node, we've got a whole bunch of bundles that are all queuing up on node one, trying desperately to get to node two. Uh, if I move node two back in range then all of a sudden these things are connected uh, and we can uh, we can get all the bundles through, right? Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much it for this. You can you can go through. We'll talk uh, again later about uh, some more commands that you can run, uh, BP source or BP sync, uh, in order to send and receive data. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and take a little bit closer look. Uh, at what's going on in some of these bundles now that we've talked about endpoint identifiers and what's going on. So I'll capture uh, a couple of these with Wireshark. And so there's ARP. So I, what I want to find is a bundle that's headed uh, from one to two. So for instance, this one. Uh, so this guy here, uh, Wireshark is, is able to identify it as bundle protocol. Uh, and even tell you a little bit about it. So it's from, from 1.3 headed for 2.1. Uh, this is, I think, the source timestamp here. We can actually figure that out. So again, if we dig down in here, we can get down into the bundle protocol and look at the primary block. And now uh, we can, now that we've sort of seen a little bit more of these endpoint identifiers, we can we can look into here and start decoding what some of this is. Um, so the the source scheme and the source scheme offset here are, are 1 and 3. So this was when we uh, executed ping from 1.3 headed for 2.1. This is the 1.3, and that's the 2.1. These are, these, are, these are decoded in here as offsets because the, the actual bundle protocol uh, allows for more than just these sort of numeric EIDs. The numeric EIDs are part of the IPN naming scheme, and there are other naming schemes that you can use with, uh, with Bundle Protocol. The other naming schemes, if you use uh, something that is text-based, then uh, Bundle Protocol is one of the things that Bundle Protocol tries to do in, in order to save space is move all those text strings down into a dictionary and then these, are, uh, these, these numbers up here are references into that dictionary. In this case, we're not doing that. Uh, the, the IPN naming scheme uh, cleverly uses those offsets as the actual values uh, for node numbers and service numbers. So what you can, if you look down here, you can see that there's a dictionary length of zero. So we really don't have a dictionary in this uh, in this primary block, uh, and we've encoded everything up here. So there's a destination scheme and a, a, a scheme and sch a scheme offset and a scheme specific uh, offset. Uh, and uh, a source and also a report to. So there are a number of uh, uh, a number of diagnostic flags that you can set with, associated with bundles, uh, and those go out and, and tell uh, bundle protocol that when it's generating uh, certain kinds of reports that indicate status changes or things that happen to this bundle, you can have them sent somewhere other than the source if you wish. Uh, in this case, all the reports are going back to 1.3, so it's the same as the source, but you can cause them to go somewhere else. Um, and the, there's, there's no custodian in this bundle because it's not being sent reliably. So if, if these bundles get uh, corrupted or lost in transit, they're not going to get retransmitted. Uh, and then we've got a, a source timestamp, the source timestamp sequence number, uh, a lifetime, uh, here that is uh, time to live in seconds, and again the dictionary length of zero says there's there's no dictionary here. Um, Ion inserts a couple of uh, of other extension blocks uh, in in most of the bundles. So there's a previous hop extension block uh, that talks about what is the essentially identifying the sender of this data uh, as uh, the the IPN node number that is the sender. Uh, and then there's also a bundle age extension block. In, in bundle protocol version 6, one of the issues is that the, 
the, this time to live that's up here, this lifetime, is wall clock time from when the bundle is created. And, and really that lifetime is there just so that the system can get rid of bundles that are stuck. Right? If, a, if a bundle absolutely cannot make it to its destination, uh, we, we need a way to that you know a way to clear those bundles out of the system uh, if they're not able to make any forward progress for long enough. Now that's really hard to do in a system where you, you may end up you know sitting in a router for three or four days waiting to make forward progress. Um, but still, that, that that's what this lifetime parameter is is, is doing for the system. So. The, the, synchroniz the thought was the synchronization there doesn't need to be particularly tight. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, sort of millisecond level synchronization or even necessarily down to the second level. Uh, you, you may have, you know, your, the, the, the requirement for the synchronization uh, among nodes is on the order of, you know, maybe tens of seconds or, or even minutes. Um, but still, that can be a problem if you end up with nodes that... Uh, uh, or get turned off and don't have a persistent clock and they turn on and they think that it's say 1970 uh, or they turn on and they think that the time is zero uh, and, and there's uh, and, and then they are, are not synchronized at all with everybody else and then what do you do? Um, and this bundle age extension block is is one of the things that was uh, was come up with to try to address that um, and, and what it does is it, it is doing what the time to live in IP sort of was meant to do originally, which is count how long, how many seconds this bundle has been around. Uh, and so you can use that as a, as a backstop uh, against the lifetime. If you don't have clock synchronization, uh, you can watch the bundle age in seconds. And when that gets to be uh, beyond the bundle lifetime, then you know that you know, something has gone horribly wrong and it's time to delete it. Uh, the payload block, again, we talked about this briefly last time. Uh, this is the, the payload of the of the application, the application in this case being ping. Uh, and so somewhere hiding in there, uh, there is the sequence number, uh, as well as I think, as I said, I think the, the PID of the, of the ping process so that it can know that it's getting the right one back, uh, and then uh, a little bit of payload that it can, uh, that it uses to transmit.